Hi everyone. In this episode of Fast Paced Tutorials, I'm going to explain to you what Azure App Services are and how you can create one. Here I am in the home page of Microsoft Azure. Uh, you will most likely see the App Services option right on the home page, but if you don't see it, you can either search for it at the top or go to All Services and then you will find it under Web. So what is Azure App Services? You can think of it as a web server as a service. It is called platform as a service and it means you don't need to deal with an operating system. You don't actually have access to the underlying operating system. It will create virtual machines for you, but you don't need to worry about the operating system that is running on those virtual machines. You don't need to um, worry about installing antivirus, updating the antivirus, or installing updates or patches on the operating system. Microsoft Azure, Azure will take care of all that for you. All you need to do is to deploy your code and you have multiple options. I'm gonna go um, over all the options and I'm gonna explain them for you. And then uh, with a little bit of configuration, you will have your application running on the cloud. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new app service. The first thing you have to define is the subscription you want to use. I have one subscription, which is the free trial I have created, and I'm going to use that subscription. The second thing is a resource group. Now, I don't have a resource group created in my uh, under my account. So under free trial subscription, I'm going to create a new resource group. I'm going to call it app service, app services uh, tutorial. And it tells you that you can't have space. So I'm going to remove those and here we are. Okay. Next, it's going to ask you for a name. Now, your name must be unique because as you can see here, it's going to create um, a subdomain for you under azurewebsites.net domain. So let's say um, fast paced tutorials. Nice. It, it is available. Next, you have to choose how you want to publish your code. You have the option to publish your code um, as a regular code or if you have your application containerized you can use docker container now notice that when you choose docker container uh, the options down here are a little bit different when you choose code you have different options runtime stack is something you have to choose when you decide to deploy your application as a code where if you choose Docker container, you right away have to decide which operating system you want to host your application on. Um, right now, I'm just going to choose code, and then I'm going to show you what are the options you have, what are the languages and platforms that are supported in Microsoft Azure App Services. So right at the top, we have .NET Core, which is um, the new popular development framework from Microsoft. You have ASP.NET. You have Java 11, Java 8, um, different versions of Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Now, with .NET Core, let's say if I choose .NET Core 3.0, you, you can decide to choose uh, and host your application on a Windows server or on a Linux server. Have in mind that when you choose the operating system, you may see a difference in the regions that are um, actually supporting that specific operating system. I don't think there is a difference between Windows and Linux when you choose uh, the core. But uh, for example, if you choose Docker container, you'll see, uh, and if you decide to host it on a Windows machine, you'll see that your choices are very limited. Where if you choose Linux, you have a whole bunch of regions you can choose between. So let's go to ASP.NET. Obviously, when you use, when you want to 
publish ASP.NET code to Azure App Services, you can only have Windows servers because ASP.NET regular .NET applications in, in general don't run on, on Linux machines. And for the rest, pretty much you can decide uh, between Windows and Linux. If I choose Node.js, you can see Linux, Windows. If I choose PHP, again, the same thing. For Python, um, if you choose 3.8, you only have the option to run it on a Linux machine. If you choose a lower version, like 3.7, uh, again the same thing for 3.6 you have the option to host it on either Windows or Linux and then for Ruby you only have the option to host it on Linux I'm going to choose .NET Core 3.0 because the sample application that I have which is hosted on GitHub and is available to everyone is um, developed using .NET Core 3.0 the region you can choose based on your need but I'm going to choose the one that is closer to me, which is Canada Central. Then you have to create an app service plan. So this app service plan is basically, think of it as your server. You can have one app service plan and then multiple app services under that service plan. And all the app services under that service plan are going to share the resources that are available to that app service plan so here you have to create one you can choose to accept the name they have provided for you or you can just select your own name and choose your own name I'm gonna stick with whatever Azure is uh, suggest let's go to SKU and size you have different options you have dev test, which uh, is for less demanding workloads, as it says here. They actually have a free one. It is not very fast. It has only one gigabyte of memory. And then um, up until 60 minutes a day, it is free. If you go over that, you, you're going to pay for it, which, which is called F1. With F1, as you can see, you, you only get one gigabyte of disk storage and the memory is shared, right? Now, if you move to D1, which is like a higher level comparing to F1, on top of the existing uh, F1 features, you're gonna get custom domains. So with F1, you cannot have your domain uh, kind of pointing to your app service. With D1, you can. Again, it has one gigabytes of memory and then uh, 240 minutes per day. It is only 15.23 Canadian dollars per month. B1, which is a little bit more, I would say sophisticated, not only supports custom domains, it also supports SSL certificates. You can scale it up, but it doesn't scale up automatically. So we can manually scale it up and it will give you up to three instances only. That's it. And then the storage is 10 gigabytes. The Azure Compute units are introduced here and it's a little bit more powerful. As you can see, it has more RAM. Then you go to production. So for production, you have the S1, which is like the cheapest um, option you have under production tier let's say which again uh, it has 1.75 gigabytes of ram um, it gives you custom domain ssl it does support auto scaling and up to 10 instances it does support staging slots which is um, like different environments within your application uh, i'm going to explain them in more details in another video you can back up your application up to 10 times um, a day. Uh, you can use Traffic Manager to improve performance and availability. And it has 50 gigabytes of disk, uh, disk storage. The next one is P1v2. 3.5 gigabytes of memory, more ACU, and it gives you auto scaling up to 20 instances 
S1 gives you a scaling up to 10 instances and then it gives you 20 staging slots you can back it up uh, up to 50 times a day and it provides you with 250 gigabytes of disk storage and it also has more ACU so faster compute basically next one is P2V2 so this is uh, like a very powerful application server if you want to have one 7 gigabytes of memory 200 uh, sorry 420 ACUs uh, same as P1 V2 it gives you 20 instances um, auto scaling 20 staging slots 50 times backups per day and 250 gigabytes of disk storage so the only difference between these two is memory and then um, CPU power and it's more than double the cost next one is P3 V2 same thing same concept same features more RAM more CPU the next tier is isolated also known as app services environments as it says here, it's for advanced networking and scale. So right away you can see that it scales up to 100 instances. You, so you can scale out your application and have up to 100 is instances running at the same time. Um, and because the app services has some sort of internal load balancer, it will distribute the load across all the instances you have there. Uh, another thing you can like, you can get um, and achieve by choosing this tier is to deploy and host your app service inside of your virtual network the other ones production and dev test you can integrate them with with your virtual network but they're not going to um, be inside of your virtual network because it is shared when your app, uh, your application, your web uh, application, your app service is going to be on a shared virtual network that other companies and other users are also hosting their app services there. But when you choose isolated, you have the option to actually host it within a subnet inside of your virtual network, and then you can give it a private IP address. You can um, use VPN to do things like hybrid cloud and uh, so basically you can say that it's for um, for the scenarios that you need more security more scalability and more power you have three options i1 i2 and i3 they all give you the same uh, set of features like um, scaling out up to 100 instances um, isolated network single tenant system um, all that and um, you get one terabyte of disk disk storage uh, the only difference is um, that uh, i1 has 210 total acus 3.5 gigabyte i2 has more power more uh, resources more cpu more ram i3 same thing so um, basically that's it that's what isolated or app services environment is i am going to actually create an F1 app service because I want to show you in the next video how you can easily scale up so I'm gonna click apply here next next tab is monitoring where you can decide whether or not you want to have application insights enabled for this um, web application so I'm going to say no for now and then because I want to go through application insights in more details in another video. Next step is to add tags if you want to add any. I don't want to add any tags now. And then review and create. So you can review the options here, the uh, configuration that you have selected for your app service and then you can cr uh, click on create and it will create your app service it's going to take a few minutes i'm going to stop the video and then i'm going to uh, resume when it's created and that's it it just took a few minutes and our app service is now created and available i can just click here and go to the resource 
And here we are. Our app service, which is called Fast Pace Tutorials, is created. As I told you, it will give you a unique URL under azurewebsites.net domain. So if I copy this, or even if I click on it, it will open a new tab. And you can see that, hey, app service developers, your app service is up and running. Time to take the next step and deploy your code. And that exactly is what we are going to do next.